Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... Suspense! Tonight, Roma Wines bring you the suspenseful play called Heart's Desire, starring Lloyd Nolan. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now, a glass full would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you a remarkable tale of suspense. And with a tale called Heart's Desire, and with the performance of Lloyd Nolan as Henry Doyle, Roma Wines again hope indeed to keep you in suspense. A New York City dock, jutting out into the Hudson River, A place deserted now this night because the hour is late until a man is seen moving down the dock towards the river, moving with a curiously groping, stumbling, aimless walk. And then there is a woman moving out of the shadows, a woman who is a little overdressed with a little too much makeup, sidling over to where the man must cross her path. Hello there. What? I said hello. What's your name? Lucille. What's your last name? Hey, you're a fast worker, What's huh? your last name? Tell me. Stop, you're hating me. Tell me. Carmichael, Lucille Carmichael. Oh, no. What's the idea? No. That hurt. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the matter with you, anyway? Hey, are you in trouble? No, I... Yes. What is it? Were you looking for somebody? Is somebody lost? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for someone... Someone you love? Love, yes. Someone that's my whole life. You want to tell me about it? It helps sometimes. What? Well, you don't have to if you don't want to. Yes, they... They say that a man can remember his whole life if he's drowning and... You didn't come here to... No, no, I came down here. I I don't know why to think to remember. But if, if I do tell you... Maybe it'll come back like the drowning man. If I could start from the beginning, the very beginning. What was the beginning? My childhood. My father and mother were immigrants. Very poor people. I was hungry ever since I could remember. My mother was a scrub woman in a big office building. Sometimes she'd take me with her at night. And I'd see those big beautiful offices where important people were working all day long. My father didn't work. Oh, a few days sometimes, that was all. And always at home, there were quarrels, quarrels, terrible quarrels about money. First, it used to make me sick with misery, my mother and father fighting. I couldn't stand it. And I'd run out and go and walk on the streets, walk through the, the fashionable neighborhoods, watch the fine people gaze through the great shop windows and all the beautiful things that were to buy. And above all, I'd, I'd come down to the docks near where I lived and watch all the gay and happy people sailing on the great ocean liners to wonderful distant places. Oh, that was the best of all. That was when I knew most clearly that someday I'd grow up and live like those fine people. So I didn't have to think or worry about anything ever anymore. And even when they died, my mother and then my father, it was nothing. To me, they hadn't really existed at all for a long while. Only then, I knew I must find some kind of work to do. So I went to the bank in a fine big building where I always knew I would go. I told them I was ready to go to work there. And they hired me. And after a few days, I decided that I should tell them what I had in mind. So I went to see the president of the bank. I was just 19 years old. Yes? Well? I'm Henry Doyle. 
Oh, oh, yes. Well, uh, Henry, it's a little unusual for one of our messengers to insist upon seeing the president of the bank personally, but since you're new here... Uh... Oh, oh, listen. That's the Aquitania. Oh, is it? Yes. She's sailing this morning. I know when all the big ships sail. Uh, Mr. Frizzell, when I go abroad, would you advise that I take the Aquitania? Well, she's a very nice ship. Yes, I, I think she'd be best. Uh, Henry, you may not believe it, but a bank president is a fairly busy man. Oh, yes, that's why I came here to talk to you about my plans. Your plans? Mm -hmm. Yes, you see, I plan to be president of the bank someday myself. You what? Oh, <laughs> not right away, of course, but someday. And uh, I thought I ought to tell you. Well, Henry, that's a very laudable ambition. And there's no reason, if you work hard, devote yourself wholeheartedly to the interests of the bank, why you shouldn't be president someday. Or anything else your heart desires. Well, you really think that, Mr. Frizzell? Why, of course I do. Remember, Henry, there's always room at the top. Oh, I'm very glad to hear you say so, because that's just what I've always thought myself. And that's... That's what I was, a messenger. First, I was only an ordinary messenger, but then... Later, as they came to trust me more and more, they gave me more and more important things to do, and... Well, at last, I did only the very confidential things. The most important things of all. 800, 900, 1,000, and 100 more is 21,100. Will you sign for it, please, Henry? Oh, yes. Gee, Henry, doesn't it worry you sometimes, carrying all that money around? What, this? <laughs> someday I'll have more than this. Much more someday when my ship comes in. <laughs> So I was happy. All day long, I saw only the kind of people, my kind of people, the fine, important people that I admired, the kind that someday I was going to be. Oh, I was happy. Until something happened. Something that happened in a single day and that changed my whole life, changed everything. Huh? Henry Doyle, sir. Oh, oh, yes, yes, Henry. Come in, come in. Thank you. I think you know everyone here, don't you, Henry? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. How do you do? And, Henry, the reason I've sent for you is because we have an old custom here of trying to show our appreciation to those members of our little family whom we feel have given loyal and devoted service to the 42nd Street Bank. And so it gives me great pleasure to present you with this gold watch bearing your name in token of your splendid and outstanding record since the day you joined us, 20 years ago today. <laughs> what? Well, take it, Henry. 20, 20 years. Yes. And in all that 20 years, gentlemen, Henry never once was absent and never once was late. Henry, congratulations. <laughs> what about a speech? Bachelor, Henry? Well, Henry, what do you say? Twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty years. Nine hundred, one thousand, and one, and two... Fifty-one thousand two hundred. Will you sign for it, please, Henry? Mm. Oh, uh, yes. Say, so what's the matter with you today, Henry? You act like you're walking around in a dream. What? I said you act like you're walking around in a dream. For twenty years I've been walking around in a dream. For twenty years. <laughs> that day, for the first time in twenty years... I did not go directly to the place the bank had sent me. Instead, I wandered through the city to look again at the things I dreamed of in my childhood. The beautiful store windows, the elegant, well-dressed people, and the great ocean liners waiting to sail for enchanted, far-off places. Things that I knew now could never, never be for me. Because suddenly I'd grown up. I was a man. A man going into middle age and the childhood dream had passed me by. 
these things I thought. And many other things. Quite different things. And then that afternoon, I was sitting on a little... in a little park. And wondering what was the best thing to do next. And then I saw a policeman coming toward me. And all at once, I knew it would be very simple. Uh, uh, officer. Officer. Yeah? Uh, I, I want to be arrested. You know what? Yes, I do. You, you see, I'm a messenger for the 42nd Street Bank. Uh, so what? I, I've just lost $50,000. <laughs> Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you a star, Mr. Lloyd Nolan, whom you have heard in the first act of Heart's Desire, a radio play by Robert Richards and Arthur Lawrence, which is Roma Wines' presentation tonight of Suspense. Between the acts of Suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. The name Elsa Maxwell stands for Gracious Hospitality. And here is a timely suggestion from Miss Maxwell. Planning even a simple dinner nowadays calls for real imagination. But there is a simple, inexpensive way to dress up ordinary foods and make them tempting. Dine by candlelight, if possible. And most important, serve golden Roma Sauterne, well chilled, with the meal. The soft light and the bright golden glory of delicate Roma Sauterne greatly heightens your pleasure. That is truly an appealing idea. And as Miss Maxwell suggests, delicious Roma California Sauterne, a wine grower's masterpiece, is the subtle note that tones up the occasion. You'll enjoy its freshness of bouquet and the superbly delicate flavor. And like all Roma wines, it possesses unvarying goodness, the goodness of selected grapes, picked at their best in California's choicest vineyards, brought to fullest flavor by the ancient skill of Roma's famed winery. Serve Roma wines regularly. They are quite inexpensive. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And now Roma Wines bring back to our soundstage Mr. Lloyd Nolan, who in the character of Henry Doyle continues a narrative well calculated to keep you in suspense. Twenty years. Twenty years of being a messenger for the 42nd Street Bank and with such a fine record as I had, and then suddenly to to lose $50,000, they couldn't believe it. They didn't know what to believe. They kept asking me and asking me. And I kept saying the same thing, that I'd fallen asleep on the park bench and that when I woke up, the satchel was gone. And then came the trial. They were all so nice, all my witnesses. And then, finally, it was over. Andrew Doyle, in view of the fact that the money in question has never been found, the jury finds itself in more than reasonable doubt of your innocence of complicity to the crime of theft, and therefore finds you guilty, adding, however, strong recommendation for leniency. Uh, that is also my inclination, particularly in view of all testimony here as to your exemplary record in the past. With this in mind, it is nevertheless my necessary duty to sentence you to four years in the state penitentiary. <laughs> Lights out in 15 minutes. Lights out. 15 minutes. Lights out. Lights out. Sleep. How can you sleep behind bars? No, I I like it when it's time to go to sleep. Yeah? Yeah. Don't you sleep kind of restless, Henry? Oh, no. I sleep very well. Hey, Henry. I don't think you ever told me what you're in here for. For losing some money. Yeah? How much? Fifty thousand dollars. And you just you just lost it, huh? Yeah. What'd they give you? Four years. Gee, that's tough. And I'll be out in another year myself. Oh. I don't mind. 
You don't. No. Four years isn't long to wait. Why should I mind? No, I didn't mind. Because almost every night I'd dream. I'd dream of the things that I'd done that day when I left the bank for the last time. Things I'd never told to anyone. How I'd gone to the stationery store and bought a heavy brown envelope. How I'd thrown the empty satchel away in a vacant lot. How I'd sealed the brown envelope with red sealing wax. And how I'd gone to the little pawn shop down by the waterfront with a wide, dirty window. Three crooked steps leading to the door. The little bell had tingled when the door was open. The clocks, ten or twenty clocks, ticking time away. And the old man in pink shirt sleeves who sat behind the wicket. You, uh... You, you want something? Uh, you the pawnbroker? <laughs> That's right. Well, I'm going away for a long time, and I'd like to leave a package. Oh, okay. I'm taking a trip around the world, and I may be away for several years. Oh, Why? Well, don't worry. It's perfectly safe here. When you come back, it'll be just as you left it, oh. with the seal unbroken. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'll have the receipt for you in a minute. Receipt? Uh, sure. Don't you want one? When, uh, no, I I might lose it. I'm going away, see you. Then uh, are you going to claim the package? Well, I... Uh... I could just take your name. Oh, I... yes, yes, that's the best way. I'd... I'll leave my name and uh, you can make some kind of a note on the envelope that it's only to be given to me. Hmm? Okay, let's have it. What? Your name. Oh, uh, my name. Well, uh, you see, my name... It don't have to be your right name. It don't even have to be a name. Just write something on there so you can identify the package. Oh, oh, yes. Well, uh, let me see. Yes. Yes, I, I'll just write something. Something that I can remember. And always then, just as I was about to write, I'd wake up. Oh, it was a wonderful dream. Even better than the ones I used to have because this dream was real. And then one night, there in my cell, something happened. I was asleep. I was dreaming again. The same dream. Your name? Oh, my name. Well, you see my name. It, uh... It don't have to be your right name. It don't even have to be a name. Just write something on there so you can identify the package. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Yes. Yes, I'll just write something. I'll write... What was the name, Henry? What did you write, Henry? What was the name? What was the name? For a moment, I lay utterly frozen with fear. I was awake, but I'd been sleeping, dreaming, talking. And he'd heard. He knew everything. Everything but the name. The name. What was it, Henry? What was the name, Henry? The name you wrote on the package. What was it, the name? The name? Uh, what? <laughs> it was kind of tossing around in your sleep, and I, I come over to see what was the matter. Oh. oh, was I? Yeah, I guess you was kind of having a nightmare, huh, pal? Nightmare? Yeah, yes, it was a nightmare. For a while, I was afraid even to sleep. The fear I'd say out loud what I'd written on that envelope, and he'd hear and then all that I'd planned for would be gone. I knew I must force it all from my mind, as I had done with unpleasant memories when I was a child. I spoke less and less. Last, I didn't even speak at all. The last two years, I didn't speak at all. Even when the warden called me to his office to tell me I was once again a free man, I didn't answer him. I didn't speak at all. I was free.
free. At last, free of everything. I can hardly wait for the train to carry me back to New York. And then the pawn shop. Yes, the same dirty window, the same crooked steps, same tinkling bell, all those clocks, clocks ticking time. The clocks, my dream was about to come true. And then my heart almost stopped beating. The man, that man behind the iron wicket. It wasn't the same man. Okay, well, you have. You're not the pawnbroker. No. But he's an old man. He wore pink shirt sleeves and... He's feet. dead. What? You're talking about my father. He died three years ago. Dead? Oh, but you're his son. Yeah. Then you're carrying on the business. Yeah. Look. I... Uh, I left the package here four years ago. I told your father that... Got the I, receipt? Uh, no, I didn't take one. Now, nah, look, but we don't... I, I tell you, I didn't take one. See... I was going away on a dangerous trip. I was afraid I'd lose it. So your father said it would be enough to give him a name. Uh, he wrote a note on the package. What was the package like? Well, it was a brown envelope, oh, but so big and sealed with red wax. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember seeing that. Hold on a minute. Oh, could your father said I wouldn't have any trouble. He said I'd just have to mention the name, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what it says here on the envelope. Oh, that's good. Can I have it, please? Sure, just give me the name. Of course. The name... The name is... <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It slipped my mind for a minute. Isn't that silly? I, I just can't remember it for a minute. I... You sure this is your envelope? Well, of course it is. I told you what it looked like, didn't I? I described it perfectly, didn't I? Wide, brown envelope, sealed with red wax. Look, go on. What about the name? I mean, what's written here? Uh, now, listen, you, you must know it's mine. You, you must know that envelope belongs to me. You, you must give it to me. Oh, I must, must I? What's in it? Well, there's... What difference does that make? If you know so much about it, you ought to know what's in it. Now, listen. That's my envelope. Give it to me. Look, bud, don't tell me what to do. The note here says not to give it to anybody unless the name is presented. Now, what's the name? Uh... It's... So long. No, no, look. No name, look, no envelope. I, I'll remember it in just a second, please. Sure, will you be... sure. Why don't you go outside? Maybe the air will help. No, but uh, wait. Go no, on, please. outside. Please, will you... Go please? on, beat it. All right, but I'll be back. I'll be back. That's my package. I'll remember and I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> wandered through the streets. I beat my head with my fist, trying to remember. While I was in prison, I'd forgotten it. I'd made myself forget it. Now I couldn't remember. Names raced through my mind, but none of them were right. I began running, looking at names in the street, on the shops, anywhere I could see them. Names, names, Paul names. Paul Beauty Settle, Livingston Cross, Jewelry. Miriam and Company, Neckwear. Sylvia Torrance, Lingerie. William D. Roberts, Furniture. Billy Canfield, Drapes. Dorothy Gregory, Hans. Arnold Milton, Shoes. Delaney, oh. for Drugs. Lawton, for Liquor. Benson, for Books. Graham, for Gowns. Alan Wilson. Edith Parker. Martin Slater. E. Billing. R. Nelson. E. Dawson. Dixon. Denby. Green. Gray. Brent. Miller. Smoller. Muller. Martin. Minton. Minton. May. Bay. 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 Day. Oh, no. No. And what, what'd you say your name was? Lucille. Lucille Carmichael. No, no, I can't remember. I... Gee, Henry, I feel sorry for you. I see. Honest. You've been swell, but it's no use. Try again, Henry. Try to think mm -hmm. back. I can't. You've I... got to. Maybe it wasn't the name at all, see? Hey, what were you thinking about when you wrote in the package? I don't. You must have been thinking about something. I... I was thinking about... everything I'd always wanted to do, the things I was going to buy, places I was going to go. That was it, mostly, the places I was going to go. All over the world, just wandering. Everywhere I wanted. Just wandering to my heart... Henry.
Henry. What is it? Henry? To my heart. My heart. Heart's desire. <laughs> That's it. Heart's desire. That's what I wrote on the package. I remember. I can get it. My money. Fifty thousand dollars. Henry, I... wait. Wait. Why? I'm going to get my money. You can't get to... it tonight. It's too late. Oh, I'll wake him up. I then don't Then you'll be care. suspicious. I don't care. It's mine. Henry, Henry can... wait. Now, be calm for a minute. Oh, please. how can I be calm? Just uh, sit down here beside uh, me. For a minute. Come on. I don't Look want... down at the water. That'll help you to get calm. Uh, uh, See? The water is so calm. Uh, I don't want to look at the water. I want to go Henry. get... What? Can you swim? No, I can't. What's the difference? With... Ah! Oh, what are you doing? Stop! Ah! Ah! No! No! I remember. Heart, heart desire. Heart desire. And that is the end of the story, of Henry's story. But you might have suspected that it was not quite the end of the story if you had seen a little item in the newspaper two weeks later under shipping news. I will read it to you. Miss Lucille Carmichael, who recently came into an inheritance from a long-lost relative, has engaged the royal suite of the Aquitania and is sailing for Europe tomorrow. Her stay abroad will be indefinite. And so closes Heart's Desire, in which Roma Wines have brought you Mr. Lloyd Nolan as star of tonight's study in Suspense. Before Mr. Nolan returns to the microphone, let me say a word for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. Genuine cordiality and simplicity have made Miss Elsa Maxwell's hospitality famous the world over. She often says, There's no better or simpler hospitality way than a glass of distinguished Roma wine. I suggest Roma Tokay, a delightful wine, for any time or any place. Serve with coffee or dessert as a delightful finishing touch to your meals. Or set out Roma California Tokay with fruit or nuts or any snack when friends drop in. That's a worthwhile suggestion. Try Roma Tokay, a velvety, flame-bright wine, moderately sweet, light, yet delightfully rich in flavor. You can always depend on Roma wines to be delicious. Always unvaryingly fine in quality. And the next time you use vermouth, sweet or dry, use Roma vermouth. Zestful, herb-flavored, blended and mellowed with all the traditional skill of Roma wineries. Yet, it's surprisingly low-priced. So, try Roma vermouth soon. And this is Lloyd Nolan, back from a watery grave just long enough to tell you how much I've enjoyed working on this most admirable program, Suspense. Mr. Spear has asked me to pass along to you the word that next thu- uh, Thursday, pardon me, your stars will be two of Hollywood's favorite people, Miss Nancy Kelly and Mr. Helmut Dantine. I'll be listening. I know you will, too. Good night. Suspense is produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Lloyd Nolan will soon be seen in the picture Captain Eddie, produced by 20th Century Fox, who are now celebrating their 30th anniversary. Don't forget next Thursday, same time, Nancy Kelly and Helmut Dantine will be your stars of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.